On the day after Christmas, I made it my goal not to get out of my pajamas. I'm happy to say I achieved that goal. Now, had I made my, made my way into a store that day, I would have witnessed the great exchange. <laughs> Trading the wrong size and for the right size, or getting a different color, or getting a different gift altogether. Or had I made my way to the landfill, I would have seen Christmas trees going into the dumpsters. Christmas is done. The big crescendo reached on Wednesday. At least so says the world. But the church says it's only just begun. And we've still got a whole other week to go. I love the church and the church's sense of time. Four quiet weeks to prepare for Christmas and 12 long days to enjoy it. And we need this time. We so need this time if we are to unpack the reality of what has just occurred. The culture may tell us it's all about gifts and eating way too much and parties, all of which are fleeting and some of which is awfully heavy on the sugar. The, ter the church tells us it's about something much deeper, something much more enduring, something much more real. Luke tells us the story of that sacred birth, a story which is easy to adore, easy to sentimentalize, and also easy for us to keep a nice, safe distance from the action at hand. John tells us about the Word made flesh, an uncomfortably intimate proposition. We hear Luke's story once on Christmas Eve, but the church gives us John 1 twice on Christmas Day and today. There is something here we are not to miss. For John, this word became flesh in a world full of light and dark. Just as that very first word spoke into a formless void and began to shape creation out of the chaos. In John 1, the dark is strong, but the light shines out in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. It seems that the culture tries to pull us into a place of sweetness and light, a slightly too cheery place at this time of year. But our sacred story reminds us that the darkness is very, very real. And it isn't going away. But our sacred story also reminds us that the light has come into the world and it's stronger, always stronger than the dark. The Word became flesh in this world a world that is always a mix of light and dark, of dark and light. And a cursory cruise around our news confirms that this is so today. Even while we celebrate this life that changes the world, the people of Syria slip deeper into a civil war, where it is very difficult to discern who is on what side and all sides perpetrate violence. Sudan has again plummeted into civil war with layer upon layer of complexity. Car bombs still explode the world over in marketplaces, outside of churches. People are still rebuilding their lives from natural disasters in Haiti and the Philippines. Long-term unemployment still plagues many in our country, and poverty, food insecurity, and inadequate health care still plague many in our state and in our county. There's still a lot of darkness in the world. And into this dark world, God does not do a hit and run. 
God doesn't just descend on one night to bestow precious gifts. God is here to stay. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, full of grace and truth. From His fullness we have all received grace upon grace. Operative words there being grace. And in Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, we can be sure of one thing. When we gaze upon Him, when we hear Him, when we touch Him, when we smell the fragrance of His presence, when we taste His body and blood, we are touching the very stuff of God. We're gazing upon the face of God. We are hearing the divine call. We are touching the heart of God. We're breathing in the fragrance of divinity. We are consuming radiant holiness and drinking divinity into our being. The Word made flesh has lived among us. The Word made flesh lives in us. The Word made flesh lives through us. This Christmas story doesn't just last for a day or even for 12 days. This Christmas story will last for the rest of our lives. There's one other piece to this word made flesh that's caught my ear this year. And I'm so grateful to John's gospel for giving us this image because just as Eucharistic prayer B reminds us, this word made flesh echoes back through the prophets and the law all the way back to creation itself. It's the same word speaking over and over and over. But if this word is made flesh and our flesh, if this word lives among us, then all of a sudden our words matter. And they matter a lot. So much of the darkness in our world, so much of the conflict, so much of the violence begins with our words. And our words become flesh in actions that do such harm. We wield our words like a sword until they become real ones. And into this warring world, into the large-scale scale wars across the world, into the smaller ones that may be only known to you. Into this warring world comes the Word made flesh. Jesus calling to us just as he did to Peter at that painful moment in Gethsemane. Put down your sword. Put your sword back into its sheath. The word that is to speak through your life is full of grace and truth, full of love and light and life. So on this fifth day of Christmas, I want us to try something. I first experienced this at a Pache Bene workshop last summer. So I want you to close your eyes. And picture a sword in your hand. Now raise your hand with that sword. Think of those places where you are at war with yourself, with another person, with your life circumstances, with the world. Think of the words you wield as you fight these battles. Sometimes spoken in anger, sometimes spoken with disdain, sometimes spoken in fear, sometimes spoken out loud, sometimes spoken only in your mind, but spoken nonetheless. 
the word has always created things. Since the very beginning of creation, Think of the things these words you have wielded have created. Now with your sword raised, hear Jesus' call to you. Put down your sword. Put your sword back into its sheath. And as you are able, slowly, Lower your sword and put it back into its sheath. Let the Word made flesh, soul full of grace and truth and love and light and life, let this Word fill you. Let this Word made flesh pour gracious words from your mouth. Let this word made flesh speak its truth in your actions. Let this word made flesh love and live and shine through you and your life. You may open your eyes. There is so much darkness out there. Somebody, somewhere, has to put down their sword first. Somebody, somewhere, has to start, start showing people how to sheathe their swords. The Word who became flesh is not naive. God knew daggone well what God was in for when God leaped into our flesh. This is not easy work. This is work that is exquisitely costly. In the end, Jesus gave his life for it. But this is our calling as those whose flesh bear this word. And the word became flesh and lived among us. We have seen his glory so full of grace and truth. We have received grace upon grace upon grace. The world is dying to receive this word. Put down your sword that this word may live and reveal the truth and beauty and love that flows straight from the heart of God. It may be dark out there right now, and darkness is strong, but light is stronger. And the word made flesh speaks a more powerful word than the darkness has ever dared to utter. <clears throat>